My name is Isaiah Cashel Doe. Um, I am a junior and I play football here at Springfield College. My childhood, so I am the last child of nine. So uh, we don't all have the same mother or same father, but essentially I'm the last child of nine. Um, I grew up in Boston, Mass, in Roxbury. It wasn't the best neighborhood at all. Um, there was gang violence, a lot of just depression like around the neighborhood, but like the way that my father and my, like my mother had kind of built me was stay in sports, like stay in school, like just do something productive, but don't be in the street. So I was that kid where if the corner store is right there, I'm going to sprint there because I low key think it's a workout, like, and, but then I'm gonna run right back. And also cause I was scared. My brother's in jail. So that kind of has a lot, him being in jail made me kind of grow up a little faster than people might've think. Um, he got in trouble with the law and kind of just seeing that firsthand, it, it hurts. Like you see someone that you love so much and you're so close to, and now he's in there for 10 plus years. And I'm in the MECO system, so for anyone that doesn't know what the MECO system is, is inner city kids have the opportunity to go to a suburban school and kind of get a different or better, as they say, education. I'm the only black kid in my class. That was going from a, a cultural school to a school like that, I did not know how to react, how to talk to anyone. You got people asking to touch my braids at the time. Like, I went to three different high schools. So ninth grade, I finished Mecco. Uh, we had moved to Woburn because stuff was getting really hard in Boston. So we needed an outlet just so I didn't get in trouble because I was getting in trouble, getting in fights, and it wasn't worth it. So we moved to Woburn, um, and I go to this private school called Bishop Fenwick. I was two. There was two black kids, me and this other male, and that was a really wealthy school. So kids are pulling up in Benzes and all these BMWs, and I'm like, dang, I don't even have enough money for the bus. Like, I have to take a bus there, like, or my mom has to come pick me up. And it's just kind of, it's a difficult to, another difficult thing to adapt to. So that being said, like, I adapted well, but 10th grade, I got in trouble because I'm hanging out with, the, all these kids, their morals were, let's party, let's, let's do all this stuff. So now I'm partying, I'm drinking, I'm doing all this extra activities. And then it got bad to where I wanted to hurt myself because I felt like I didn't fit it anymore. I'm just I'm being someone I, I don't know. Like I'm trying to act like I'm this real wealthy kid, but I just, the, where I became or where I came from, I, that wasn't who I was or where I was raised. So for about a month or two, I just tried to hurt myself without telling anyone, telling anyone. And then it got to the point where my, I had to go to my parents, like, I need help, like, I need, to, I need to see a doctor. Like, this is a time where I just need some help at the moment. As a black male, it's hard. And we wanna be stronger, we wanna act like we're tougher and bigger, but we're, we're normal. We're just like everyone else. Everyone needs that type of mental security that they want to have. Um, I grew up in a family where Weakness just wasn't a thing. We didn't act weak. Like if you're weak, like you're, you're weak. And we didn't want to act weak. But I had to come to realization that at that time in my life, I was very weak mentally. Physically, I might've looked strong, but I was hurting on the inside and I wasn't asking for help. And that caused me to almost hurt myself pretty bad. Not thinking about what that would do to my family, my friends at the time, coaches, life in general. But that happening was just a, grow, a growing point, simple as that. My coaches, for, they've made me grow completely. When I came in, I was just an irresponsible 18 year old, ready to party, ready to party. They taught me, they taught me that this, this field, is, it's more than a game. Those people I see in the locker room every day, like I will need them regardless of if I'm just on this field or not. I was taught to bring my actions from the field right to the classroom. I have a 3.6 GPA. Coach C is like, he's like my second dad. That's what it feels like. I have a second father and I love it. That's why this place, I call it home. Like it's a second home. Like I can come here and I feel safe. And that's how they've changed. They've made me, they've showed me how to grow and be happy, like truly happy. If, if it's not scoring a touchdown, making someone laugh is easily the best thing to do in my life because like I've gone through these troubles where I was down, really down. And so having that opportunity to make someone smile, not even knowing what they're going through. They could be going through nothing. They could be having the worst day. If I make you smile, I hope I just made your day better and you definitely made mine better. 
to help change, I feel like people need to have those conversations that are really uncomfortable. Simple as that. If that goes for mental-wise, uh, racism-wise, stereotypes. So you have to want to learn to make change. You have to want to change to make change. If you don't want to change, there's nothing, okay, then nothing's gonna happen. I think people have to want to do it. Once they want to do it, try to do it. Once you try to do it, do it. Time waits for nobody. So I've taken that to account and I'm, time doesn't wait for me. If I want to get something done, I need to do it. Yeah. And if I want to make change, this needs to happen. I'm Isaiah Cashwadell. This is my story. This is my truth.